little project here. Um, I am going to turn this into a beer engine. Um, this Friday, I've got a little local competition going on where we, well, not really a competition, but an event where we have uh, food from around the world and we are taking homebrew and we are actually pairing our homebrew with food from all around the world. And I chose England. Um, I'm, I'm pairing my food with what's called a cottage pie. It's basically a shepherd's pie, with, but with beef instead of uh, veal, which is in a shepherd's pie. So I'm making a cottage pie, or a beer that goes with cottage pie. I came up with a Boddington's clone, essentially. And after making that, I kind of realized that that's not really a flashy beer to turn heads to kind of make people go, oh, that's a great beer. So I was trying to think of a way that I could actually serve it to make it, give it that little extra oomph. And what I kind of came across was the beer engine. A lot of cask style beer in England is in a beer engine. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, little hand pump for a, for a RV sink found some DIY stuff online and I'm going to come out of here this is just going to the beer out of my keg and I'll basically I'll put a this on the end so that air can come into the hole so it's going to get oxygenated hopefully I can get rid of the whole the whole keg on Friday night so then I don't have a half keg of oxygenated beer but yeah yeah then you just pump it with this and it comes right out. There's a couple other things we can do with that, but, um, and then I will, out of this board, make kind of, I was thinking about making an 8x8 eight eight cube to house this and then kind of go from there. Another cool stuff I have, though, is I just went on a trip. I went down to Phoenix just this last weekend and I went to a handful of breweries. Um, Arizona Wilderness, that was pretty cool. They had some pretty unique, strange beers there. That's what I kind of like to look for, is stuff that isn't normal. Because um, I did go to Four Peaks, but they didn't have any cool stickers. They just had the ones that were the uh, unique to the individual beers, not the not the Four Peaks logo. I was kind of disappointed there. I don't know if this will make it onto my fridge or not. We'll see. They had some really good beers, but those were two style. Those were, those were very good. They're Raj. Um, British style, English style IPA was super good. They didn't have the barrel age. I was kind of up, not upset, but that's what I wanted. So that was pretty good. Four Peaks. Then we went to 12 West. That was super cool. Just this tiny little brewery and kind of a uh, business upstart building. I'd say that's what it seemed like at least. Um, but they had some super good beer. They had some they had some kettle sours. They had a uh, really nice New England IPA. They're Kalax, and yeah, the New England style IPA was their Kalax. That was super good. And then another good one was Red House. Um, I don't exactly remember what we had there. A couple IPAs, and uh, they had a Kavas there that was really good. That's still from 12 West. Helton had some really good beer. Um, what do we have there? I don't know, it was late at night. I kind of forget what we had. But it was really cool. They had uh, their their cups were just little, little round cups, and then they served it to you in a little. The the flight board was a muffin tin, which I thought was really, really uh, unique. That was kind of a cool idea. And then the last one we went to was Hoos Hoos or Hus. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. We hung out there for about an hour and a half before we got our flight back home. And there, they had hands down the best beer I had on my trip. Um, he kept on feeding them to me too, which was. Kind of good, kind of bad before going on an airplane flight. But they had a, it was called Barrel Aged Irish Coffee. And it was their coffee stout aged in Irish whiskey barrels. Barrel Aged Beer isn't my favorite. Um, I'm not a big whiskey drinker. Stout isn't like my absolute favorite beer. But, and coffee beer, I don't adore coffee, but I like coffee beer. 
but adding all those together, that was awesome. They had just the right amount of coffee. The, the, the barrel was perfect. And the stout was super. Their milk stout was unreal. Add all three of those three together, and it was a super good beer. I had a great time. They have a really cool beer scene going down in the Phoenix Valley area, whatever you want to call it. I was very, very confused with the metro area. It was very different than what I'm used to up here in Minneapolis. Um, but yeah, that was my little trip. It was kind of a fun little beercation. It wasn't last year. Um, my wife and I went to Asheville, and that got a little out of hand with all of the diff different breweries we went to there. We ended up going to like 13 in the Asheville area, and that was... And ended up becoming all about going to breweries and not doing other stuff. And this time we only went to five or six, which is, I think, perfect. But, so that's that. I'm going to start working on this build, show you what I'm doing, kind of screw up together. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. We'll figure it out. So here is my plan. I, I know myself and I know I am a terrible carpenter. So this is what I'm going to do. I need to write what I'm going to do down. I can't just kind of come up with it as, as I go um, so I'm gonna make an 8x8 box um, I'm just gonna start with the top and bottom as an 8x8 piece on the top 8x8 piece on the bottom um, this board right here is three quarters of an inch thick so if I still want up and down to be eight inches I need I'm gonna do eight inches side to side six and a half inches top to bottom so it's still eight and that'll be this side here and the other side of the back and then on the back it's going to be six and a half by six and a half and then the front I was going to do six and a half by four and a half so then I have this little slot in the front so then I can um, have the hose come out and then probably uh, clamp it to the table so then it stays put as I'm cranking on that lever um, so it's not flying everywhere. We'll kind of see what happens from there. But I'm just going to start measuring stuff up. Um, give the saw an attempt, even though I am a terrible um, carpenter. And we'll see what happens. All right. So here is what I got. Like I said before, I am a terrible carpenter. Um, as you can see, I have all sorts of what we like to call apprentice marks on my board. So I'm going to try to... Uh, Oh, I should have done a better job with that one. That one sucks. This one ain't too bad. This one's pretty good. There's a little bit right there. This one sucks. So I got I got some sandpaper. I'll try to fix that shit because I'm don't know what I'm doing. I can cut electrical conduit like a champion, but give me some give me some boards, give me some pieces of wood. And I suck. So I'll see what I can do and then go from there. But yeah, so Basically, here's the bottom, here's the sides, back, other side, here's a smaller piece right here, and this will be upside down, oh. and then this will be the bottom. It kind of worked. We'll see. I'll try to get a little better. And then here's the hole for my hoses. Let me tip it up a little bit. Right there. Hole for my hoses. And then I'll try to clamp it to the table so it's not all weeble wobbling all over the place. But I'll get her sanded and we'll play around with it from there. So uh, <clears throat> back to our trip to Arizona. My wife and I, we were celebrating our 10th anniversary and we decided we just need to get out. Um... We tried to get out and about, but um, we just kind of, on a whim, decided to get go to Phoenix because, one, it's freaking cold here. We live in the cold, barren tundra known as Minnesota. Um, when we were gone, we talked to our kids. They said last Saturday was on uh, the morning negative four when we were hanging out, and it was chilly in Arizona, I suppose, but it was like 62 in the morning. Yeah, that wasn't bad. That didn't suck. Um, yeah, Saturday morning we decided we were going to go hike up Camelback Mountain. I don't know if you've ever been to Phoenix, but Phoenix is crazy because most of the part is flat like this board. The whole town built on this flat plain. But then 
here are these giant mountains sticking up. Flat, 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 mountain, 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 flat, flat, flat. So it's a weird, it's a weird place. Very different than the uh, the glacial till of Minnesota. Um, I prefer it up here, but it was a good time. But we hiked up Camelback Mountain, and that was a monster. Uh, we probably walked about three and a half miles, but we climbed 1,500 feet. That was insane. We barely made it, but we did. Um, went up Echo and down Choya. A lot of fun. But yeah, 10 years. It was, it was a, it's been a good run for us. We, we like how things are going, but we just need to get away. Um, it was kind of an anniversary trip when I kind of got into this whole beer making shenanigans too. We went up to Stillwater, Minnesota, went to our first craft brewery together. We went to uh, Lift Bridge Brewery in Stillwater, Minnesota. And about halfway through the halfway through the tour, she kind of looked at me and said, you should get into this. This would be a lot of fun if you start making your own beer. And soon enough I did. Uh, it probably wasn't for about six, eight months, but then another buddy of mine, he he was really in, he wanted to get into brewing beer. So the two of us together kind of bought our first equipment and kit and um, kind of went from there. Brewed a couple extract batches and then immediately got into all grain because that is the the choice way to go. Now you have more control, more, it's harder to repeat, but once you can, it's easier to, I mean, it's better to repeat it that way. You get better hop utilization, you get better color out of your grains, you get more control of what's going to happen. Um, I like to call the, well, I like to call the Mr. Beer Kits. Basically, you go to the dairy section and get that Pillsbury package of pre-made cookies. You throw them on the on the tray. That's Mr. Beer. Um, Brew and extract is kind of uh, hanging out with Grandma while she, when you're making cookies with Grandma and going all grain is making everything from scratch and I, I thoroughly enjoy doing it that way um, so yeah I'm going to keep on saying here for a while got a couple down a couple more to go and uh, we'll get it hey well I am back in the garage um, it's been a few hours but you know, that's how life goes sometimes I mean yeah I need to, to sand all my shit went inside and got sidetracked with life I don't know Made dinner for the kids, did some homework, hung out, watched some Olympics, and I'm eventually back out here. I mean, this isn't the only thing I got to do with my life. It's the only thing you, you're you not doing with your life. You just got to work on it when you can. Um, such as, such as a, uh, such as a hobby. Yeah, that'll be all right. Yeah, I think I already did this, but it's all good. So I'm going to... I'm going to stain this, see how it looks. I got some, well, that's my poly. I got some stain over here that I've been camping on for a while. I can either go with early American or dark walnut. I'm thinking dark walnut. That might look a little better. A little older, a little, might make it look like it's had a little more use to it from the get-go. Oh. We'll put on some gloves. Nothing like uh, going and sitting on your wife's brand new Davenport's with uh, stained filled fingers. She'd be pretty pissed. All right, let's see how this goes. Good enough for the girls we go out with, honestly. That looks nice. That'll look pretty good. So yeah, I'll get through, stain the rest of these, let them dry overnight, and then we'll we'll pound her together in the morning. We'll see how she goes. I like it. This will be a fun project. Sounds good. Well, here are my six finish sides. Well, finish staining. I don't know. Is it supposed to turn out like that? 
it right here it soaked up right away and before I could even get to it to uh wipe it off it was already that that deep and dark I kind of like the random patterns that it makes so it's pretty neat now I just have to decide which side I like better before I start putting her together oh, that must be pretty neat and then I was thinking and when I do put it together, I put it together with nails with the big galvanized head. That could be a nice little touch having that big old school looking nail head to her. I don't know. We'll see. But it has turned out to be a fun project. I like it. I like doing stuff like this. It's not a chore when you're having fun. And it wouldn't be a hobby if it wasn't fun either. All right, well, we'll nail and glue her together in the morning. So it is now the next day, and this is what I got. Some of the pieces here. I like how it got a little dark there. This will be the top or bottom. And I'm just gonna start kind of piecing it together and see where this gets me. Hopefully it lines up decent enough. Digging through my garage, I can't find my, I know I got some wood glue, glue here somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, go figure. Me and Mr. Organized. Um, so I'm just going to go without for right now. This is more of a, more of a proof of concept than anything. We'll see if this actually does work and actually looks nice, and we'll kind of go from there. I can easily remake this box if I, if I ever wanted to. Well, it's doing what it's supposed to do. No cracks on the inside. I call that success. Ugh. Not the greatest, but it'll do, huh? Ugh. I'm not a fan of that at all. Whatever. Not my greatest work. Ugh, that's gross. 
That's gross. That's nice. And so is that one. But man, man, oh man. I need some... It's a good practice, I suppose. Ugh. It's a nice tight corner there and there, but... Oh, what happened there? That's no good either. Oh well. Well, this will get the job done. I guess we'll see. I'll probably make another one, a more permanent one for later. This will be good for tomorrow night. So, we are at this point. Now all we have to do is drill a hole up top for this bad boy to fit in there. I'm gonna go dead center. I'll figure out what size hole saw I need here. Where'd my tape measure go? Here it is. Looks like a two inch hole saw will be perfect. So then we're not, the holes are three and seven eighths inches apart. And it looks like this center shaft is about an inch and seven eighths. So a two inch hole would be, would be pretty perfect here. Let's see what we got in here. Inch and three eighths. I know I got some bigger ones. Them. So, what do we got here? Inch and five eighths. Two inch right here. Yeah, man, that'll fit perfect. Let's find our center point. Yeah, I've got a couple friends that do woodwork. I am going to recruit their help next time because I've got almost an eighth of an inch of play from this side to this side. That's seven and 15. That's eight and one. Yeah, that's a big, big swing. And then right here, yeah, it's eight and a 16th. Let's just put her at four. It'll be close enough. So there is my center. Here's my arbor. I don't need this big giant extension. We'll pop this off for now. Hopefully the camera's not in the way. I'll just scoot her over. And I like to put the, uh, drill the center hole first. Just so I'm not trying to play around with it while the big uh, hole saw is on there. There we go. So 
So that'll do there. Let's see if this fits now. Nice. It's pretty friggin' sweet. I think this will be a pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool deal at the event tomorrow. Will it be a showstopper? I doubt it. But it's a fun little novelty to have. Alright, so here is what I got. I got 25 feet of 3 ace ID half inch OD vinyl tubing. Supposedly that is the right size to go on the end of this guy here. We'll see what I can cobble together. So it should go here. Seems about right. Slide this on there. Shit, this might even work as I bump it. So that's that. Then we'll get this screwed in before we go any further. Looks straight enough. Now will this move? There we go. Not too bad. Maybe I won't even need to clamp it down. And then for length, that'll do. Six, eight, nine feet. Now, I was thinking I'm just doing this for now. I don't even know if they make a make a ball lock keg out. That's three A's. I might need to get a hose clamp on there too. I'll have to hunt one down. That'll work. Excellent. This will be pretty freaking sweet, as long as it works. There was one more thing I was going to make. There is a, supposedly a big debate in England, whether you live north of London or south of London. And that is on the use of a, what they call a sparkler. Here. Three ace barbed, a three ace thread, and then a three ace cap. I'm going to drill some holes in here, tighten this up. We'll put this on the end and hopefully that will diffuse any carbonation that we have going on in there too. And that is the topic of debate amongst a lot of British beer drinkers. Do I know that for sure? No, I've never been there. Love to go, but I have no idea. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I got to find something to hold on to this, uh, this, uh, this cap here. It'll be, just give me a minute. There, that'll hold it. Let's see if we can poke a couple holes in here. Hopefully it doesn't go flying. Hopefully I don't hurt myself. Or break the drill bit. There's one. I was thinking I'd go for about nine. It's drilling like butter. What the hell? No. 
Man down, man down. We have a fallen hero. Son of a bitch. I only got six holes in. I don't know if I got any more bits. I got a smaller one. This will be. This will be interesting. Zoom out. There we go. Focus right there. I don't know. That ain't bad. Not too many barbs inside of there. That should be all right. Good enough for the girls we go out with. Three quarter, three quarter, get her tight. Damn. Now she's stuck. And then we'll put about six or eight inches of hose on there. Cooters. Should go right on to here. Then in theory, this should slide right onto here. I may have to heat her up a little bit. Well, I'll go heat it up first, put it under hot water for a couple minutes, and then we'll try again. It should slide, I'd like for it to slide all the way up to about there. I'll get her on, I'll go inside. So I went inside, got it hot. But as far as I got it up there, I probably could work on it for a little while longer, but this will do for right now. I'm just really excited to try it out now. See if it actually works or if I'm kind of fucked. We'll kind of we'll let's go check it out. So hopefully we don't have a catastrophe. I got my PSI turned down to about two in my regulator just because I don't want to fill it up with oxygen yet. I'll do that at the event. I'll let it oxygenate. But right now. I'm going to hook it up. There, I'm in. We got beer flowing. Let me get... Let's try to do something. Let me get my glass real quick. Oh, I also bought something else that's kind of cool for this... For serving with this. I bought called beer comb I guess they uh, will let it get all frothy and then scrape off the top whoosh, with the beer comb but let's play with this um, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. it's a two-handed device here we'll set her down hopefully I don't drop my glass Seems to be doing its job, man. So is it just going to keep on leaking, I guess? All the way forward her off sorry I wasn't watching the camera check that out big frothy foamy head maybe I'll take off the co2 right now it's pretty sweet I'm liking it 
Mm. That's going to be a hit. Well, now I got to just clean it up and get ready for tomorrow. Um, I like it. Obviously, the concept works. I don't know what I'm going to do about the line isn't full. I don't know, maybe I'll start with it full of sanitizer and then start pushing beer through it. It'd be nice to have that line full, but I don't know. It's doing its job. I like it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.